Hello! Thanks for watching my layer breakdown of my Daredevil Ambush composite with Griffin Cosplay. My name is Trevor, and this fantastic Daredevil cosplay was created by Griffin Cosplay. Be sure to check him out on Facebook. Now let's head back into Photoshop for some fun. Here's the finished composite with Daredevil ambushing this criminal on the full moon night in the middle of Hell's Kitchen. This image was the image that I took originally of the background with a building with a fire escape. I took the raw image and adjusted it don't save adjusted it so that the contrast between the sky and the buildings was great enough that I could come in and do select color range and get a really nice selection of just the sky. Inverse that to then create a nice mask of just the building. So once I had that, I was able to go in and readjust the image to kind of make it back turned into night and give it a, a, a darker feel. Cool thing using raw images and smart objects in Photoshop. You can adjust them on the fly. Now, let's turn off the background layers so you can get a better understanding of some of the other images in the in the shot. So once I I had the the building masked out, I knew that I would want some clouds in the background. So I grabbed some old images of some clouds that I took many years ago and uh, started placing them in and created some masks just to kind of blend them together well. I then threw on a couple curves, a hue saturation, and some more curves just to kind of fill them in and make them merge a little better with the background. So then I added the moon, and the moon is actually a brush. There it is. And that looks pretty cool. From there, um, I knew that I wanted to give the fire escape a little bit of a blur because I knew that he was going to be jumping and I wanted the, the image to have a little bit of motion blur. So I went ahead and duplicated the fire escape by itself and I created two layers, one with it sharp and then one with it with a slight motion blur to it just to give it the effect that we were moving through the scene. Next up, I didn't like how this window here was so dark. I felt like between our angle of the camera and then the moon being here that laws of physics would require there to be a reflection of the moon there so I just added in a little bit of reflection of the moon there. Um, next we have in the layer stack at least is the rope but we did not I did not get to that quite yet that was one of the last things that I did. I actually generated this in Photoshop's 3D um, application Basically, I created a path of a squiggly line and turned that into an extrusion and then rendered it out. So let's add in the daredevil here. Okay, so this daredevil actually is a conglomerate of three images. I really liked his upper torso here 
and his facial expression of this image, but I didn't necessarily like the way his legs and feet were. So I wanted to pull his legs and feet from this one because I liked that they were up higher, tucked in closer to his body like he was really jumping down from, from somewhere. And then this one here was was photographed so that I could get the bottom part of the baton uh, flying through the air. So after merging the two upper and lower torsos together, I applied the same type of blur to a duplicate layer of Daredevil to give us the illusion that he was also traveling through the space. So we have a few blending um, layer adjustments, sorry, uh, a few blending layer adjustments here to help him merge into the scene a little bit better because when I shot him he was quite a bit brighter than what the background ended up being. So first we have a desaturation and then a darkening, I called it a blur. It's basically just um, a levels, or a, sorry, a curves adjustment. And then a little bit more burning here. So from there, let's go in and start messing with the overall look of the, of the image here. This is just a solid color fill layer set to soft light at 100% because nighttime is generally uh, more cool on the color temperature spectrum and I knew that there would be some artificial lighting somewhere in the scene probably coming from a street light or, or something down below the frame here so I wanted to add in a little bit of warmth into the highlights and into some of the background. And same thing, um, by using a color dodge layer, um, I kind of masked out some of the highlights so that those would come back into the scene. Color dodge on this layer adds just a little bit of extra glow to the bottom half of the scene here. This is literally just um, a big giant soft white brush set to normal 100% on, on the actual layer, but I probably had a lower opacity when I clicked the brush button. But uh, it's just a singular white dot on of of some color right over the top of him to kind of give a little bit of flare from the moonlight there. This is some some additional light rays emanating from the moon kind of to help sell this this whole idea that the moon is is really backlighting this scene. Here we have a couple more um, soft light color fill layers just to again help merge everything together the soft light color fill layer really does a lot to help bring to bring a, a, an image together here is a lens flare added what I usually do is I, I duplicate the entire image actually I, I don't duplicate the image I'm sorry I do a clone stamp layer and uh, then run the lens flare filter I undo that I fill a layer with black and then hit command F to reapply the same lens flare 
that I just applied and then I can set that mo set that to screen mode and then at that point I can go in and adjust the opacity I can put a mask on it and I can blur it if I need to um, it's just a, a lot more customizable way to use the Photoshop filter lens flare than straight out of the box so um, nothing too complicated just um, something I learned from Flurn here is some more color glow from from the moon that's a blue spot set to soft light at a hundred percent here is an entire um, clone stamp image of all of the layer stack set to overlay at 35 percent to help darken up some of the shadows I guess before I get to this I need to talk about the rope and the guy in the corner can't see him yet so the rope like I said I created a path there's the path that I created obviously I, I warped it a little bit after it was after it was made but that uh, gives you a good idea so once I had the path I stroked the path with a with a very thin brush and then set it into the the 3D extrusion from selected layer played played with the light and um, added some some effects in the 3D and was able to create this nice looking rope the baton that is closest to the camera um, was imported from this image here I also threw a motion blur on that since it's supposed to be moving through the frame as well and then to give the illusion that some of the rope was in front of Daredevil here I duplicated the the rope layer so that I could bring some of it back forward in front of him it gives helps sell the realism of it, of it actually being kind of wrapped intertwining around him so originally I, I didn't necessarily plan on having anybody down here in the foreground but I felt like he was so intently focused on on something down here that um, that I wanted to give something for the eye line to go to and I know Daredevil is 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 blind but uh, you know depending on which which comics uh, lore you're, you're going after uh, you know you can see through uh, sound waves and things so um, I'm probably totally wrong on that but uh, that's kind of the way I envisioned it this layer is uh, an, another clone stamp layer that uh, helps bring out the detail turn that off and on I've got that set to 56 percent and then after that I thought that it was looking pretty awesome so I threw my logo on it and then flattened it and put it out to all, for all you guys to see Again, thanks so much for sticking around and watching my my composite layer breakdown with Griffin cosplay of the ambush daredevil image. If you'd like to check out more of my work, you can always head over to my Facebook page, which is facebook.com tr good photographics, and I'll have plenty of other examples on there of some of my other work. And then, if you'd like to book me for a session. Um, you could always head over to my wordpress.com page, which is goodphotographics.wordpress.com. 
Here's that. Uh, I've got some, some other examples of some images, a little bit of background on me and my photography, um, and different photographic uh, session rates. Thank you so much. I hope to see you again.